Yeah, I know. I can't go down there without a bicycle, so, yeah. Please get on your bicycle? Do I look like a guy who has a bicycle? Well, I guess since I keep my bicycle in my backpack, however that works, uh, they can't, they obviously can't see if I have a bicycle or not, whatever. Anyway, this is Gardenia, Eterna's gym leader, with the worst name ever, by the way. Seriously, Gardenia? Really? Really? Well, maybe I shouldn't complain about it out loud, because she has super strength, that's right. At one point in the anime, she was seen lifting a cacnea like it was a basketball, and according to the Pokedex, cacnea weighs 113 pounds. Wow. So, yeah, the gimmick for this gym is that you gotta fight all the trainers before you get to Gardenia, which is the same exact thing I do every gym I do, so it's not exactly a big change from usual. Now there's one last area of Eterna where... BAD! Oh, well, of course it was gonna happen. He can't, he can't run next to me or something, he's always gotta ram me, idiot. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, there's this area of Eterna that we haven't visited yet, and he's taking us to the statue of Dialga, which is a statue of Palkia and Pearl, by the way. And this guy here, you, you may remember him, it's Cyrus that we saw in part two, I believe. Yeah, our main villain, who's, well, setting up important plot points for later on, but for now, we don't care. We're just here to check out that awesome Dialga statue. Okay, a brilliant flash of inspiration. You? A brilliant flash of inspiration? You're a Pokemon NPC! You can't have brilliant flashes of inspiration! Make certain all your attacks hit, avoid enemy attacks for sure. Well, exactly what I said. This guy couldn't have a brilliant flash of inspiration if, um, trying to finish that joke here, but obviously, looks like I can't. But seriously, what was the point of that? How do you ensure all your attack hits and make sure the opponent's attacks don't hit? You can try and do your best to manipulate the odds, but you can only do so much. No, the real way to become a Pokémon Master is this. Grinding is the magic that turns dreams into reality. There we go. That's the key. And, okay, stay aware from that Pokémon statue. <laughs> An official investigation. I want to bet that they're the ones who ripped the plate off of the front of the statue because there was a plate in there in Diamond and Pearl, but in Platinum it's been ripped off as we saw a few seconds ago. And... okay, now we got... I don't know why old people in video games are always the ones that spout out gems of wisdom like their freaking fortune cookies or something. And yeah, now he's talking about uh, the inscription that I told you about before. Oh, he's actually gonna tell me what's what's written on the on the plate. Let's check it out. Okay, so that's just a few fragments. Blah blah blah. It's about uh, Dialga and Palkia. Well, well, Dialga only, I guess, because Palkia. It, it's a statue of Palkia and Pearl. Oh, there's another inscription? Let me guess. This one's about Palkia, even though it's clearly a statue of Dialga that we saw, so Palkia should have nothing to do with that. And yes, as I said, it's an inscription about uh, Palkia, and okay, about there once being a third inscription, I guess. I guess there was an inscription about Giratina, Think about it, a third Pokemon alongside those that control time and space. Well, yeah, it's because we all know about it. He's called uh, Giratina. And Giratina, I wouldn't say, is mightier than Dialga or Palkia. Just different, though. I guess, well, I'm not that good at Pokemon lore, especially since I never bothered watching the abortions known as Pokemon movies. Oh, we got a vendor here? Oh, yeah, it's for herbal medicines, which uh, make your Pokémon's happiness lower, but on the other hand, they're cheaper than, uh, than regular medicine that doesn't lower your Pokémon's happiness. So, no, I'm not gonna bother buying anything here, especially since I try to use items sparingly in, well, not just Pokémon, every RPG I play in. 
So there's one thing left to do before we leave. We go over there, and boom! We get interrupted yet again. Well, actually, not really interrupted, because I was going to trigger that encounter anyway. And, okay, this girl, just for the three of you that haven't played this game, she's called Cynthia. She's, spoilers, <laughs> the champion of the Pokemon League, and spoilers, but... Yeah, she's also a myth researcher, so uh, of course since our quest is going to involve the myths uh, of Sinnoh, we're going to come across her quite often, but amazingly, contrary to what you'd expect from a champion, she is completely and utterly useless. Seriously, there are so many opportunities for her to actually do something, and she never ever takes them. And, oh, she's gonna give me something, I think it is... Yeah, it's the Cut HM, I remembered correctly. This right there, folks, is the most useful thing she's going to do in the entire game. I am dead serious, giving me the Cut HM. And if you don't believe me when I say she's useless, I'm gonna keep playing the game, and you're gonna see for yourselves just how useless she actually is. And just a little tidbit as she takes her leave, I mentioned it near the end of my Red LP, but there are many people among you who haven't seen it, I believe. Cynthia's name, in both Japanese and English, the first syllable of her name is the first syllable of the name of the region. For example, Sinnoh's Japanese name is Shinu, and her Japanese name is Sharona. Meanwhile, Sino Cynthia in English. It matches up! Either that, or it's some crazy coincidence, but I don't think it is a coincidence. I think it was actually intentional. Anyway, as you saw, I didn't go straight for the gym. I went for some training on Route 211 West, where we are right now, and Route 211 East is on the other side of Mount Coronet, which separates this route into two, and we can't go to the eastern part until much later in the game, like the fifth gym, after the fifth gym, even. And by the way, Mount Coronet doesn't only uh, separate that route into two, it separates the entire region into two, and there are two Pokémon, Shellos and Gastrodon, whose appearance changes depending on which half of Sinnoh you catch them in. They're pink in the western part, and they're blue in the eastern part. And the only difference between the two is their looks, because they have the same stats, the same moves, everything. And there are a few Pokémon that radically change colors as well, depending on their gender. You got uh, Hippopotas, Hippowdon, Kenhoru, Pururiru, and Burunkeru. And, once again, there are no move differences, stat differences, unlike the Nidorans, but those are a special case. Anyway, do we have any fellow Castlevania-thon attendees here? Well, I certainly am glad that I didn't miss too much of it. Of course, I wasn't... I, I wasn't watching during nighttime because I need my beauty sleep, and uh, there were also a few things I needed to do on a Sunday, so I missed a few parts, but for the good ones, I, I didn't really miss them. The, there was a the part with the Scribblenauts babies being held hostage, and yes, that is really what they did to raise donations. They, they threatened to toss Scribblenauts babies into Scribblenauts ponds full of Scribblenauts alligators if they didn't get donations. And that, the, the, the whole concept is really freaking hilarious. You toss babies into a pit of alligators in a video game. But yeah, I guess that's what Scribble Knots allows you to do. Sky is the limit, especially with the uh, Super Scribble Knots and the adjectives and stuff. And yeah, that was really fun. But for me, the best parts were easily the ones where Toast and Anna the Titan were, com were commentating. I mean, wow, they are really naturals at this. They, well, they did a few things. They sort of provided voice acting for Castlevania 64, which was being played at the same time as their Saturday shift, 
and it was really hilarious because they were adding comments of their own, like, and someone suggested that they should have done, like, Castlevania 64, the abridged series or something. And heck, Toast pulled off a pretty good Skeletor impression for Death, that's right. He, he made Death sound like Skeletor. Sorry if I'm laughing at the same time, it was just so funny. It, it might not sound as funny when I'm saying it, but trust me, it was freaking hilarious. And they were also reading bits and bytes of some Paris Hilton book for donations. That's right, Paris Hilton, the grand supreme intellect of planet Earth, wrote a book. And, I mean, it, it, it was absolutely priceless. I favorited uh, a seven-minute video of Toast reading parts of the Paris Hilton book with his solid snake voice. The guy has a damn good solid snake impression and he read Paris Hilton's book with a snake voice. You, you really gotta go check out that video, it's in my favorites. It really highlights how insanely dumb Paris Hilton was. You know what they say? Better keep your mouth shut and have people think you're dumb than start speaking and confirm that they're dumb or something like that. I don't know the exact wording, but everyone knows what I mean anyway. And I'm just going to I interrupt myself here first because after picking up the Taunt TM, which is pretty much useless for in-game purposes, but has a few interesting applications for competitive play, we are in we are entering Mount Coronet for the first time in the game. Now we can't do too much here because this is the part that leads to Route 211 East, and as I said, we can't go there until we've been the fifth gym. So um, we're only going to be checking out whatever little of Mount Coronet that we can, and even there, we can't really explore much of Mount Coronet until we've beaten the Galactic Hideout in Veilstone after the seventh gym, and I believe the... yep, we are the, the path is blocked past this ice heel by a strength boulder, and we don't have strength yet, so we gotta, we gotta backtrack all the way back to the gym, which is our next destination. And yes, Generation 4 introduced wild baby Pokémon. In 2 and 3, you couldn't find them. You could, you could only find their evolved forms, like for example, Pikachu, Clefairy, but now you can start finding Pichus and Clefas in the wild. And you got Chinglings as well in Mount Coronet. But anyway, enough of that, it's time to head to the gym. And the gimmick of that place, as we've been told by Gardenia herself earlier on in this video, is that we gotta beat all the underlings. Once again, I ask, what's the big deal with beating all the underlings? It's highly recommended that you do that anyway! And just because it wasn't flamboyant enough, they added a few things like that clock in the middle of the gym that takes you to the next trainer. And once you beat that trainer, you see those fountains at the top left corner of the screen. Once you beat the corresponding trainer, the, the fountains go out, allowing you to backtrack to the Pokemon Center. And instead of all those bells and whistles, why didn't they just put a straight path where you're simply forced to fight the trainers themselves that are back against the wall and have a line of sight that go to the other wall. It would have been way simpler. And before I take a break, I'm just going to teach Cut to my Bidoo since I just remembered that I had to do it. And I'll be back in a few minutes with more Pokemon Platinum. 